That was amazing. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you. Welcome to When We Dream in Bittersweet Tongues. I am Shonda Buchanan, the curator of this lovely event, and I am so incredibly grateful that we had the opening act, uh, and I'm gonna read their bios. The drummer, percussionist of the djembe and dundun drums, and the kora Mbai Kante is an accomplished artist with over 10 years of professional experience, and the beautiful Hana Hana Hania Tahara is an LA native who is a professional dancer, choreographer, and dance instructor uh, with over 15 years of experience. So if we can give them another round of applause. <laughs> please, thank you. Thank you, that is beautiful. So this is part one of part two in conjunction with the intriguing William Kentridge exhibit here at the Broad in Praise of Shadows. The second poetry event is April 1st, so, so please tell your friends and family. But first, the Broad would like to honor the ancestors of these lands. We'd like to acknowledge and recognize the Gabrielino, the Tonve peoples, who are traditional caretakers of the land where this museum sits. <coughs> Hey you, hey you, hey you, hey Indigenous peoples have called this land home for thousands of years. Hey you. Hey you. Hey you. And they are its past, present, and future caretakers. Hey you. Tonight's inspiration and the event title came to me as a way to explore and unravel the impact of colonization on peoples and countries, uh, continents of color, as has happened here in North America. And the, I wanted to grant these artists here tonight, and all, of course also on April 1st, a chance to present from that BIPOC narrative, storytelling, I wanted us to reassert and reclaim our narrative, relocate our space in the role of storytelling in a way that we get to tell our own stories. And so that's what we're doing here tonight. And I wanna read the bios of the other artists. I realized I didn't put my bio myself because I just, I figure I'm just one person here standing up at the podium. Um, but I am a professor at Loyola Marymount University. I am a, a poet, I'm the author of this memoir, Black Indian, and uh, I am a ceremonial person who is incredibly honored to be able to speak in your space and to, to share this evening. The other authors that we have tonight, award-winning author and San Francisco Poet Laureate Tango Isan Martin is an educator and an organizer whose work centers on issues of mass incarceration, extrajudicial judicial killings of black people and human rights. Faye Hernandez, born in Chihuahua, Mexico. Yes, Tongo, <laughs> we can clap for Tongo, yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. And Faye Hernandez, uh, again born in Chihuahua, Mexico, is a diasporic indigenous trans Inglewood raised formerly undocumented immigrant. Can we say yes? <laughs> yes, it's beautiful. 
So I hope you enjoy tonight's offerings. <clears throat> Hello, 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 somebody say, is, 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 somebody say, goodbye, 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 somebody say, is, 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 somebody saying, hello, 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 somebody saying, is, 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 somebody say, goodbye, 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 somebody say. When we dream in bittersweet tongues, when we dream in bittersweet tongues, our hearts are radioactive. Butterflies escape from South African grandmothers' plastic bags on their way to work for boyers. Their dreams spilling out like translucent freedom songs, like safe shelter, like clean water, like equality onto the quaking ground. It's, 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 it can't be stopped. Gumboot dancers break the concrete with every stomp, slap, clap, and seeds of freedom fall into the cracks, stopping the earth from spinning. Is 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 somebody say goodbye, goodbye, goodbye? We won't be silenced. Freedom in our lungs like tsunamis and cyclones. Bullets rip through our ghost shadows around the world. And still we sing in our sleep, in our dreams. And the artists paint what they can't see. This is what a black life tastes like. That bitter, that sweet how we are born whole and beautiful and haunted, but our black lives refuse to end, to succumb, to disappear under the great white arc of their narratives around our neck. Is, 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 is somebody say, hello, 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 help me out. Somebody say, is, 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 is somebody say goodbye, goodbye, goodbye? Somebody say, is, 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 is somebody saying hello, hello, hello? Somebody saying, we are the butterflies all around you. The piercing stars, soundless as the wind. We are clamorous as stampedes coming for colonization and everything it took from us. Our hair, eyes, teeth, moons, poems, movement, tears, children, radioactive. Our shadows, our ghosts, our words, radioactive. Our language persistent as any timeless black hole, radioactive, radioactive. Hello, 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 somebody say, is, 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 somebody say, goodbye, 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 somebody saying, is, is, is. Is, is somebody say hello, 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 somebody say thank you. Oh, <clears throat> thank you. Mm. <clears throat> thank you, Hope. So that first poem, the, the, ch the song, the chant that I am chanting comes from Lady Blacksmith Mambazo, which is a South African group that Paul Simon uh, was one of the first people to introduce uh, that group when he was having this uh, amazing event for Sun City. I, I can't believe I'm old enough to remember that in the 80s. Yeah, I know some of you watched that on TV as well. Mary Makeba, Hugh Masakela, I mean, it was an amazing event. So I wanted to incorporate that in honor of the South African people, which of course is what the Kentridge exhibit is attempting to, um, in a beautiful way, give us a, a better understanding of. And so I'll just read one last poem. <clears throat> and um, um, children in the audience, there are there children? So, oh, well, young, younger than, okay. So there's just, there's no like um, uh, explicit language, but it's, it's a poem, so it's a poem. <laughs> <laughs> it's a poem. <clears throat> um, who say I who say Babadina? Who say I who say Babadina? Who say I who say Babadina? Who say I who say 
Pusé a Pusé Babadina Black Woman Down, a living poem. The breath. Sycamore spores and black girlhood calcified in a copper memory. Inhale. Touch the bruise until it fades into a place that can never be seen. Mama. Pour all your blood into a thimble and top it off with why daddy always beaten me and when she grew up shake that money maker so she did. The breath is a swollen kiss in the eye of a tornado, black woman. The breath is a copperhead snake under your stairs, black girl. The breath is 13 children that push themselves out of her body like beautiful bloody fists, but the black girl, child, sister, aunt, cousin, grandmother is still breathing this breath. In each instance, it is a thing we need the most and the thing that will kill us in the end. The middle passage breath. The concubine breath. They killed my son, my daughter for no reason breath and I am returned. I am writing with my eyes closed in the hull of a slave ship, Portuguese slaver on top of me. I am releasing my spirit. I am out of body to survive this. I am writing on salt water, writing to the shark, gazing at us to save me, save me, I am writing with my eyes closed, seeing the granddaughter born of his blood, but not his name, not his country under him. I am breathing, unpeeled, a historical foot. Note, a lost moccasin, broken teeth rattling in me. The breath is my childhood running in a grassy meadow, then dancing on colonized pimento seeds. But I will not die here. The breath is a circle of black women strung like garlands around your neck. The breath is a sweat lodge in heaven. The breath is a doppelganger asking, is that my breath or the breath that breathes like me? The breath is wagon trail, quiet African scented slaves crawling around the Choctaw night, ant beds, river beetles in my hair, holding my urine so their dogs won't smell me. The breath is a beast ravaging through the body caverns like dragonflies in love. In that first marriage, first molestation, first bruised lip, it will not let you die. The breath is sugar water, sugar water rolling through a black woman's body until we sleep. The breath is your black child asking you to keep your black power opinions and poems to yourself. True story. The breath is a river crashing into the mountainside until there is a hole large enough for history to come through. The breath is Latasha Harlan reaching for orange juice. The breath is Sandra Bland's rope silently singing. The breath is Eula May Love dropping the knife and turning. The breath is Nia Wilson's cheerleader dreams escaping from her throat. The breath is Breonna Taylor sleeping in her bed. The breath is eight bullets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight silver kisses ending her dreaming. The breath is a tree wishing away the noose, the chainsaw, the white gaze. The breath is Katanji Brown Jackson answering senators antebellum laced questions, but she will not die here. We will not die here. The breath is a black woman down. Exhale. However many generations it takes, you still fold into the pain of loving, of giving life, of children who leave you, of men, families, jobs, societies that deceive you, the surviving them the birthing them, the giving them away, the dying, 
the coming back to life, the breath, the breath, black woman, the door is always open and you, I, we will not die here. Hope, thank you. This nation fears me. There's too much Selena in my walk, too much bidi bidi bom bom, bitch. There's too much Frank Ocean in my loving. I remember how could I forget how you feel, how you feel. I know you were my first time, a new feel. There's too much sugar in my voice, too much spirit, too many ancestors in a room. To this hetero flexible nation that hates me, I'm a threat. These soil brown eyes are a pending earthquake. They're a possession. These lips are a wild detour, a wild harvest, and this love is a caution sign. This corazón is a red light. This nation is clearly not used to the ways of the earth. The way my loving can swoop it with one touch like wind. It is not used to a transient love like sound bath or universal energy entering my body. It is not used to the howling woman on my tongue. Not used to myth being truth. Of course, I'm a threat. This nation is a colonizer that hates, that deceives, that fears the Pima Indian in me, the eagle, the flight, the ritual of me fears, the too bare earth child, the too savage in me, the too taramara in me, the too masculine feminine combine, the too healer and warrior in me. And it tried to sever me with its hate like a colonial silver sword, but with my too much Selena in my walk, too much Frank Ocean in my love and being, too much storm in the summer, I broke a fragile masculinity. This nation is a reason why men build walls, borders on their fingertips. I am the reason why this nation doesn't cry, doesn't open up to this nation. I will always be danger a disease, a howling spirit, awakening, 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 and God forbid I awaken this nation, or any of us at that matter. But if I've learned one thing is that this is the construct. We have always been here. There is nothing, there is nothing more than us reclaiming that and understanding that flow and that movement that no one can take us away from ourselves. Let me tell you a quick story. When I was younger, I realized that there was a woman dug beneath the rubble, this male body. She pushed against this male pelvis, her coffin door to rise from this grave every morning. She tickled my tongue avidly, finding ways to snicker or howl her way out of me. Y volver, volver, volver a tus brazos otra vez. Llegaría hasta donde estés. Yo sé perder, yo sé perder. Quiero volver, volver, volver. My father doesn't know I'm his daughter too. He doesn't know how this single woman has built a colony in me. This woman wants my father to see all of the tiny woman inside of her at war, even at the expense of all of us dying unseen. She is a soldier. 
that trains the woman in me to carry guns and arms instead of men. She is wide-eyed, thick, brown, and big-lipped, the tones of indigeneity. This woman I would only find when I was running around in circles chasing my own shadow. I had this bowl cut. It was funny as fuck. Um, But I would (laughs) run around in circles chasing my own shadow just so I could see my hair billowing in the wind. (laughs) And it was then where I could see her from my peripheries, me, sitting in my temple, sitting on my throne, wings tucked in, while the tiny woman in me prayed to uphold my uterus in the air as if it were a god in need of holding These women tucked prayers into my womb to keep me alive, submerged me under ocean water during endless gender dysphoric and body dysmorphic nights. These women, we know them, they'll trail the streets singing, candles lit, scripts unfurled and always clutch us when we fall out of our own skin. This woman, me, rose down from the highest heights, wild-haired, dove down for me, wings outstretched, dug her talons into my heart and proclaimed her victory in this war, in this war of gender and identity and of colonization and identity politics. So I walked into my temple fully myself. The woman inside of me all had chalk against blackboard solving the math equation and the mystery of how I got stuck in this body and how the hell I'm supposed to tell my father I'm his daughter too. See, when mommy and I immigrated to this country, she taught me that little things were actually really big things. The garage where floor was bed became a mansion where I played, where my mother was also my father. Because where was he? Where Spanish was a Bible that erased all struggle and the nine-digit branding me citizen was non-existent. Because I was always, always oblivious to the alien people saw in me until opportunities were blank. Just like the social security number I couldn't fill in and never turned in like my vote in an election. But before I got crazy and burned this nation down... Mommy taught me patience. She said it's the spirit's way. She also taught me how to swim. It was her way of erasing the bitter taste of dead bodies from tongue. You see, they call a lot of us immigrants, wetbacks, because my people never lifted from the pits of the Rio Grande. Fabis, Fabis, speak up, talk louder. She didn't want my voice to recede to the sound of a whisper or become silent like a statistic. So she said, in your body, there is an army. In y'all's body, there is an army. And together, we will stand. And we will stand. And we ain't going anywhere. We ain't going anywhere. We ain't going anywhere. Thank you. lot of God can happen in three seconds. Not much heaven, though. Here's a man before a fight. A leave-me-alone type character. Emerging from the penniless death of a one-way street fiction. Uh, Fancy way of saying, I'm going to make it even if I have to drive backwards. All I have is chord changes and a thousand backhands. Driving the street like I'm choking it, car full of nephews, hasn't been a sun since November, and there hasn't been a street I can't choke to death. This city better back down. You see this gun on the table? And something about staring until it all feels stable. Why wouldn't I protect everyone? All my death sleep late. 
My son better be quick. My daughter better shoot first because we fall for no one. We fall for nothing. Okay, the first thing you'll feel is the heat. This lady will tell me, trying to tell me about possession. Drink life need is what I mostly hear. And most of the world leaves me alone to breathe smog like a giant, to go to jail every once in a while when the genocide kicks up in late May when politicians have too easy a time I'm guessing backwards out of one-way street in honor of myself and in honor of you, if you understand the nature of the world. And how long I've been just like my father? Well, hell of a resemblance, says the anxiety of the neighborhood. This is a crossroads, a crossroads narrative of so much crossroads, people get in the habit of turning back, turn back only to find themselves remembering me, but not my last words, a man before a fight. You feel the heat. But there's nothing to uh, keep in mind. There's nothing to remember. Really, there's nothing to be. It's just this moment, then another, then stare, then it all becomes stable. Then the table lets go fuzzy. And Friday is an unfamiliar face peeking in the window. Shit, it's cool to panic for a second. Composure is wasted on your worst enemies. People are marked on that sidewalk. You're the only thing life size. Everybody knows this in the wire hanger empire. When the blood stops walking, that feeling isn't father enough to be permission to fold. You better swing one more time. You know that father U.S. rose from the grave and said, just give me five more minutes? He said, running water is a myth. It's us who are running up, down, and all alongside this water. And people don't rise from the grave. They not laid down, neither. It's us who flip all around their bodies. So beware when the people around you all look like they about to jump. It might be your time. You'll feel the heat. And when four walls demand to be four walls and the earth outside, muse don't panic. Don't try to recreate the earth outside. Don't tell jokes to yourself. Don't even talk disrespectfully to the four walls. Instead, unclench your fists and walk away. There might be heaven if you understand the nature of the world. I go to the railroad tracks and follow them to the station of my enemies. A cobalt tooth man pitches pennies at my mugshot negative. All over the United States, there are toddlers in the rock. I see why everyone out here got in the big cosmic basket and why blood agreements mean a lot and why I get shot back at. <laughs> I understand the psycho-spiritual refusal to write white history or take the glass freeway. White skin tattooed on my right forearm ricochet sewers near where I collapsed into a rat-infested manhood. My new existence is living graffiti. In the kitchen with a lot of gun cylinders to hack up. House of God in part, no cops in part, my body brings down to Christmas. The new bullets, pray over blankets made from the old bullets, pray over the 28th hour's next beauty mark, extrajudicial Confederate statue restoration, the waistband before the next protest post. Hey, by the way, time is not an illusion, your honor. I will save your desk for last. You're a witty, your honor. You're moving money again, your honor. It's only raining one thing. Nine white cops and prison guard shadows reminded me of spoiled milk floating on the oil spill, a neighborhood making a lot of fuss over its demise, a new lake for a Black Panther party. Malcolm X's barroom jacket slung over my son's shoulder. The figment of village, a new news to a new white preacher, all in an abstract painting of a president. Bought slavery some time, didn't he? The tangent screeches of military boats and election Tuesday cars. I mean, cold blooded study and leg irons proof that some white people have actually fondled nooses. The sundown couples made their vows of love over opaque peach plastic and boat action audiences. The mega ever second is definitely my favorite law of science. Found on news clippings and primitive Methodists, my arm changes imperialisms. Simple policing versus structural frenzies. Elementary school script versus even wider white spectrums. Artless bleeding in the challenge of watching civilians think. The terrible rituals they have around the corner. They let their elders beg for public mercy. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen these kids' heads in the arrows myself and see how much gravy spills out of family crest. Modern fans of war, well, with their fucking T-shirt poems and T-shirt guilt and me having on the cheapest pair of shoes on the bus. I have no choice but to read the city walls for signs of my life. You know, apparently too much of San Francisco was not there in the first place. This dream requires more condemned Africans. Or put another way, state violence rises down. Or still life is just getting warmed up. Or army life is looking for a new church and ignoring all other suggestions. Or folk tale writers have not made up their minds as to who is going to be their friends. This is the worst downtown yet, and I borrowed a cigarette everywhere. I've taken many a walk to the back of a bus that led on out the back of a storyteller's prison sentence. They led on out the back of slave scars, but this is my comeback face. I left my watch on the public bathroom sink and took the toilet with me. Threw it at the first bus I saw, eating single mothers half alive. It flew through the bus line number and on out the front of the White House. Hopefully you can find comfort downtown, but if not, um, we brought you enough cigarette filters to make a decent winter coat. A special species of handshake. Let's all know who's king. What's the light span of uniform? Call. Man, these coughing needs to quit acting like those are birds singing. Rusty nails have no wings, have no voice other than that of a white world dining. Book pages in the gas pump. Catchy, isn't it? 
the way three nooses is the rule of the way, potato sack masks go so well with radio calls of the way, condemned Africans fought their way back to the ocean only to find waves made in 1920s, burnt up piano parts, European backdoor deals, and red flowers for widows who spent all day in the sun mumbling in San Francisco. Red flowers, but what's the color of a doctor visit? There are book titles in the streets, book titles like uh, Hero, You Make a Better Zero, or Hey, Fur Coat Lady, the President is Dead, or Pay Me Back in Children, or They Hung Up Their Bodies in Their Own Museums, and other book titles pulled from a drum solo. Run here, Hero, Lie at the Hiding Place. All the bullets in 10 precincts, nowhere to go. There's no heaven nor any other good idea in the sky. Politics means that people did it and people do it. Understand that when in San Francisco and other places that was never really there. I bet this ocean thinks it's an ocean, but it's not. It's just Sixth and Mission Street. All know who's king, king of thin things. You know, like America, I'm proud to deserve to die. I'm going to eat my dinner extra slow tonight in this police state candy dispenser you all call a neighborhood. No set of manners goes unpunished. Never mind the murderers in Somni or the tea kettle preparing everyone for police sirens. These little societies, they wander together like hopeful drops of a virus. Citizen testaments bent on offering me a nation of breadwinners to hold me back like it's a Brinks. I wrinkle the concrete sometimes like flesh. My Martin Luther King permanence turned away from a podium into the reeds like God is a dangerous twin. Black August to the mountaintop balcony on my bedroom floor. You know they steal you from the earth itself and suspend you and your broken neck from their foolish euphoria. From the loyalty of their great superstition. I mean, uh, loyalty of their agrarian reform. I mean, I mean, I returned to my mother completely disrespected for, for peeling the heat off of purgatory. They kill poets like me. Walk me away from my poems never to be heard from again. This fucking, fucking final industrial complex of bloodlines picked over, picked through a sport and spiritual death of your devil at least half made. Police become, police become a pretty word. I'm reading a lynch mob shoot strings like they were tea leaves, teaching you how to write about cities. It's the 25th century in the mirror, people. Tyranny against your chump chance, you're a chump to be mocked even with a gun in your car. A cubit of needlework spelled tool for the proletariat. The relapse ministry, talented people curled up in a fetal position next to a diamond dime. Just another service day in the theatrics of tea house fascism in a, in a bouquet of surveillance cameras in the poverty of God. New blue eyes, corpses of water, a newly potted presidency, one big shiny coin, if you ask, animated capitalism, another non-literal voice killing his white freedom, the deification of hyphens, medicine bread and picture shows, great protesters in L.A., guests of our ink, drop kicking roses in the graveyard, I mean, D.C. mink like a stone torn in half, the pen advances, despite CIA guideposts, despite non-African past and futures, a metaphorical but not surreal day in a horn-ridden life, horn player, improvising king. Like a radio prize fight featuring Shango himself, man. A, a real hand sweeps the land of racism. Man, I return to the ground. Man, I make progress with the gun. On our mother, a manual they put on music that evening. A swinging type body language for you to drink with five minute five dollar bills. For your body language, some applause. My past stomach line and neither a good thing nor a bad thing. Like being psychic on the way to a lethal injection. It'll sit you down with Lady Day. Lady Day leading youth who surrender their souls to Africa too soon. Polly thought floating in a cup of water, she saved me accessing my stomach, accessing the love of the American lynch. Coast leaves wooden avalanche into the wrist. Our mother Emmanuel, avalanche into the sharp keys. Pain, the deal you make with pain. The piano makes sense for them. Laying hands on the world gradually, addressing the bend and necks on the streets of the north. Traveling, sailing in pain, repeating pain in the north. Ten trigger fingers on that piano if harmony would have me. Putting a hundred fights on every direction offered her. Lady Day leaning on trees again, recruiting the countryside itself, saying lay your plan on this lightning make your pawns a corner pocket of men i've greeted the blues itself america may clean my dead body but will never include me there goes the poet killing without killing never mind this little painting of your language may i be a meaningful lynching a crow's passing good and dead by the afternoon
I feel like I'm in the presence of royalty. Can we give Same. them an applause? The poets are the revolutionists, you know. Uh, Paul Revere was a poet. <laughs> uh, the British are coming, the British are coming. Um, I want to, so this is the part where we get to talk to the poets, so if you have any questions, please you know, let me know, but I'm gonna ask a couple of questions and then you can let us know as well. Uh, so I'd love to know, in terms of the theme of the night, when we dream in bittersweet tongues in connection to Kentridge's work, what's your connection your first connection to anything about South Africa, like what's a memory about South Africa? And then maybe talk about how your work tries to implode colonization. <laughs> I think it took a long time for me to feel like my presence was enough poetry mm. to be, you know, that movement in deconstructing and, um, and challenging just by existing, right? Mm -hmm. But I think the work uh, rises from my need to, you know, create space for all folks that have felt othered, right? Colonization is the root of why we are, why we feel displaced when we actually have like a huge space that we exist in that is for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think my work, um, I don't know, just taps into off folks who are suffering, who have been displaced, who have, you know, histories of diaspora, and and also honoring those who can exist in their native lands and who who have, you know, each other in that context. Um, but yeah, I mean, I remember being young and just being so angry that this was the only way. Yeah. This is the only way I found to, to, you know, make something of the invisibility that I think I felt and that my community mm -hmm. felt um, and that within each other we gave presence and, and life to, yeah. to our royalty, like you right, were saying, right, to right, our right. power. Um, and we had to share that. So yeah, yeah, get on yeah. a stage and share some poetry. Oh, I love it, I love right. it, yes. Tango <laughs> yeah. for you. It's, it's a little hard to, uh, to transition from one. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> to the other, but uh, yeah, yeah. It, uh, South Africa was uh, that was like the the, the kind of like the first smoke smoke I remember. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the, uh, mm -hmm. In kind of a transition, you know, we went, you know, movement kind of went from an overall kind of like all strata challenge to really, you know, bring a, a like a, a revolutionary stage of society to, you know, after all of the, um, you know, after all of the repression to kind of a switch to a single issue, you know, mm -hmm. and a, apartheid was one of those issues that I was kind of uh, raised uh, in, in these little movement offices, <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, um, around, so you know, um, for me, it's it's uh, yeah, it, it's almost like my 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 childhood is uh, is the is the fight against apartheid. Wow. Um, you know, the smells, <laughs> you know what I mean, I the do. sights, I the do. sounds. It's yeah. some of my earliest memories, but. Uh, uh, just as far as what what uh, what like what craft can do, um, I, I I think almost like the beautiful opportunity of craft why we lucky you know mm -hmm. is because craft gives you kind of like the immediate feedback mm -hmm. of how um, you know how much you how much you've cultivated yourself internally mm -hmm. and how you cultivated, you know what I mean, whatever it is, the, mm -hmm. the village or the collective yeah, or yeah. shoot even if you want if you want to take a big shot at the interconnectivity of all yes. things. Yes. You know what I mean? So 
Um, you know, whereas like, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, you know, you can go, you know, living in a society like this with so much oppression and so much sneaky hegemony that you can get really comfortable and even addicted to, mm -hmm. you can go years and years not understanding how you've allowed this ruling class mm -hmm. to close you off mm -hmm. from your people, mm -hmm. from, and from history, even from participating in history in a critical way. But whereas like on that mic, it's like instantly, like I know when I'm, off, mm. you know what I mean, on the page. I know when I'm trying to enforce more personal territory than represent all of mm -hmm. our territory, you know what I mean? So it's like almost in a borderline selfish way. Mm -hmm. It helps me mm -hmm. live as a um, kind of as open or revolutionary as I can. We were talking earlier with Doug. Yeah, thank you. Can we? Yes. <laughs> that was powerful. <laughs> I'm about to jump into it. We were talking earlier with another fantastic poet, Doug, over here, um, and we were talking about how I feel like I've realized that poetry is prayer for me now. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm not just writing a poem. I am, I'm praying for this, whatever is in that poem, and then I'm, like, there's always something about human agency. There's always something mm -hmm. about the world needs prayer, you know, in my, in my, in the work, and so I realized that um, that's why I go between like song and prayer, song and prayer. One of the things that um, that we say that I've learned is that when you sing, you are praying twice. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's what I'm that's what I'm attempting to do with my work. And there's always something about um, the fight. I am trying to implode racism, colonization, mm -hmm. institutional racism education and its lack of incorporating the BIPOC narrative or incorporating the trans narrative. And so I think for me, that's, uh, that's the space that I stand. Like, that's my stance. That's where I exist. And for South Africa, um, I do think apartheid was a, was a smell. It was for me, too. Um, but it was interesting how they were having their own revolution but we were also having the Black Power Movement mm -hmm. in, in America, but my mom was not into the Black Power Movement. My mom, is, um, she was trying to survive her uh, abusive relationships and that kind of a thing, so it wasn't about that. But, but it was like revolution was happening all over, but it seemed more present in South Africa to me. And so as a child, like that's something I grew up uh, watching, and then only later did I start really learning, like Sonia Sanchez and Mary Baraka, you know, like the the language of Black Power movement poets. So, um, I want to turn it to the audience. Does anyone have a question? Anyone have a question? Because I have a lot of questions. <laughs> yes, yes. That's a thank you, thank you. Anyone want to take? Uh, <laughs> 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 so, um, <laughs> you want to take? Yeah, it? I'll yeah, take yeah. it. Um, I think <laughs> it's very strange. Um, I, I've always been, although I'm mad loud on the mic, <laughs> I'm very introverted. Like I, I feel like I navigate between worlds, and mm -hmm. and I've always just been a very silent, perceptive kid. Um, and so I feel like I just take all the sounds of my world, hashtag autism, but, um, <laughs> you know, I feel like, um, uh, you know, growing up in Inglewood, like being around so many different immigrants, like, you know, being an immigrant myself, like speaking Spanish at home, there's so much music. There was always music. Mm -hmm. Like we talk mm -hmm. in music, mm -hmm. we talk in story, like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, you know? And so when I'm writing, I feel like, there's some spirit yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, benevolent ancestors, I feel, are what guides the continual music that comes out of me. 
you know, I, I remember going to the poetry lounge. That was my first like spoken word experience. I was sitting on stage looking at all of these powerful like folks of color just like spitting bars and like telling their truth and their queerness and their, you know, full multidimensionality. And I was like, that's, that's what I need to do. Like my spirit lit up and, and I knew that I didn't have to be them. Mm. I didn't have to do mm -hmm. it like mm -hmm. them. I didn't have to study a, a formula. I just had to listen to my heart. Mm. And I feel like that's what moves me through song, literal songs, and then like, you know, the dance in, 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 my, in, my, in, in my poetry. I feel like I'm dancing. I feel like I'm moving. Like, I grew up dancing, you know? Like, it's all an extension. It's all just my full totality, and, and this is, you know, my offering mm -hmm. to my people, to, mm -hmm. to my family, to my mom, to all folks who feel, you know, like they live in these intersections or within their own intersections. Um, but yeah, music, music, music. I want to add something. I love what they said is this offering to the people, and immediately I thought about poetry as the, as the altar, the place where we pray. Yep. Like poetry is the, pl the place where we pray and where we can convene and we can bring people mm -hmm. into it as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know, I, I think that they're kind of, in, in a way that I can't really all the way codify, kind of just have an impression or an instinct for it. I think there are like natural shapes to in language uh, that come with definition that you can kind of just drape the words around. Energy kind of itself mm -hmm. has a, something you can trace. Um, and, you know, there's also, you know, like they said, music everywhere. You know, it's like the, uh, that, that uh, there's that theory that like uh, dreams are, is really your imagination interpreting sensations that you oh, feel yeah. while you're asleep. Psychoautomatism, is that one of the? That's exactly what it is. Psychoautomatism, <laughs> that's it. yeah, the surrealist. Yeah. So, so, so and, and what I found sometimes like I'll be, without paying enough attention, I'll be thinking of something and I'll notice that the kind of like the pace or the rhythm of what I'm thinking actually flows from some sound oh, I'm yeah. hearing, you know what I mean? And so, you know, when, the, when, it, when it's poetry time, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, that, process, um, that process gets uh, amplified and kind of more nuanced and complicated because I'm sitting in the, like, I'm the front, front mm -hmm. row, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, we're vessels of the universe talking, mm -hmm. but we also vessels of the universe mm -hmm. listening. Mm -hmm. So there's this nice little mm -hmm. sweet spot yeah. where you're just bouncing back and forth between those two intentions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of just, like, just hear opportunities and move with them and then drop it and see what you hear next and then drop it and see what you hear next. Mm -hmm. So really it's just kind of like a sensitivity to what is all that, that that's available. That you can even move off of uh, like a extant, like even outside of yourself you can move off. Like I could say a poem to the kind of like the cadence of that signing right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or even the way somebody fidgets in the audience, mm -hmm. I can kind of talk to it. Mm -hmm. Talk to you can talk to movement or let that guide the way it comes out. Mm -hmm. It's all kind of little tricks to the trades, you know what I mean? <laughs> <That's your business. laughs> That's beautiful. Um, yes. What tricks of the trade did you use tonight? Good question. Um, or did it just come from inside? Or did you just uh, to, really, tonight I was just trying to do right by these two. <laughs> by where I kind of felt they went, I tried to, like, uh, as best I can, uh, mirror their uh, journeys. Mm. That's, and then from there, it just kind of, I was just uh, trying not to lose my breath. 
<laughs> so, then, so then when my breath would run out, I would just look for quieter uh, narrators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then something else would then once, you know, you go down and something spits you back up. Yeah. And so now I'm just, so now it's, it's going up. But I didn't want to, uh, yeah. I was actually uh, perpetually trying to come back down. Mm -hmm. So it was like getting coughed up and then just trying to come down, coughed up. Like that was kind of the, that's my general impression of the mm -hmm. skeleton of what happened. Mm -hmm. that's that's Nah. Nah, it's never the same. I mean, the words are the same, but the delivery. the delivery is different every time. Oh, Actually, the delivery is mm -hmm. the fun. The, the, that's the experiment. Mm -hmm. That's how I get to entertain myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And what happens today? Yeah. That's true. <laughs> It's the same, same for me too. The delivery is always different no matter if I've read that poem a thousand times and I'm like right back at that moment when I wrote it. And, and that's when I know like that's a good poem. Like you're about to cry again. This is like a 10 year old poem, you know. Um, in terms of what influences me, <clears throat> I was born and raised in Kalamazoo, Michigan and the cadence of my family influences me. Uh, we were like cussers and loud talkers and we'd say stuff like, <laughs> um, you piddling or uh, um, no I'm going around the corner right down there you know so that's how we grew up like that so a lot of that cadence is in my my work and then also my African heritage I was also reborn in the sweat lodge I have powwow trail uh, I am like a global citizen my DNA tells me I'm a global citizen although the racial racial construct of course you know relegates me to a certain space which I occupy with pride um, because I belong collectively to the people, but the earth, you know, is a, is a song that I'm listening to all the time. Like the, the ocean is a song. I was there yesterday morning with Yemenya and just like, Yemenya asesu, asesu Yemenya. And, I'm, and then I fall into the poem, you know, and so it's like, it's, it's all one for me. It's all one for me. So it just, it comes, everything influences my work. And I'm just the vessel to to capture it and then to give it to give it back. So, um, and this is this is our time. Thank you, Darren. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> we're, we're, can we say thank you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so incredibly grateful. And so I, I want to say thank you to the Broad as well. This is my first time curating an experience, and Darren Klein is one of the people who pulled me in. So I wanted to like shout you out, Darren and Ed. So thank you very much. Thank you to the Broad. Thank you. And um, now we have another performance. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So.